Hello, and welcome to Rejuvenate Your. This podcast is dedicated to helping you find health in this toxic world. I am Dr. D.K. Geyer, and I will be the host for the show. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to introduce Scott and Cindy Merrick. Scott has a two-year degree in automotive diesel technology. He retired from aerial lift sales and rentals after 16 years, does organic farming, and was the 2015 East Coast National Support Line Trials Champion, multiple-time district trials champion, and he is constantly striving for better health and fitness. And Cindy retired from METSO as a financial business partner after 31 years. Her education is a bachelor's degree in accounting with a minor in business management. She has many hobbies, including camping, bike riding, health and wellness, and gardening, has two wonderful children, a granddaughter, and we are so happy that the two of you are joining us today to talk about the path to health and wellness. Thank Thank you. you. Glad to be here. (laughs) Yes, we're glad to have you. Okay, we have a lot to talk about today. So I was wondering if you could just begin with the simple question of why did you start on the path of health and wellness? What prompted that for you? I guess for me, just a, a quick flashback. When I was 18, I was denied a job on a truck dock. I did a back x-ray and and said, you're going to have problems. And I was like, what are you kidding me? I'm Superman. I'm 18. <laughs> I, I, I can lift a horse. So I, I didn't really pay any attention to it. But uh, fast forward 10 years later, I did start having back problems. And uh, just didn't want to be with, you know, being physically unable to do anything in life. I'd say that was the the catalyst for me as far as trying to get healthy and do better. I had, at that time, I was a mechanic working on forklifts. And I was constantly standing bent over, which just aggravated the problem. So I had let my company know that, you know, I was going to be going a different direction and wasn't going to be able to turn wrenches, you know, forever. I gave them a five-year window and within one year, they already, you know, they had me shifted to sales. So they, they really helped from that aspect. But, you know, I still wasn't going to be happy, you know, having to limit what I did. At that point, I started following a program called Body for Life, which is diet, exercise. I worked out six days a week for five years straight. That was the catalyst. I, I just wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be able to do anything I wanted to do at any time after I got in that direction. That's what happened. I mean, I, I got physically fit, was able to do anything. I never had any more back problems. If I did, it was a flare up for a day, not two weeks into bed or, or you know, two weeks laid up. I'd say that's what would spur it for me. What we did first was switch the water. And my nickname was Big Drink because I had a 32 ounce bottle of Pepsi with me every day, you know, drinking. So. <laughs> You switched to water. I switched I to water. I was always a water drinker. Yeah, it's true. She, I never drank anything but water, so. Yeah, she was she was brought up and di- different. My my upbringing was going to the local market and get my stepdad a pack of Cools and a two liter bottle of Pepsi every other day. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up more on a farm atmosphere, and it was either milk or water for us. And I'm not a milk drinker, but water. I love my water. <laughs> Good. So, yeah, that's what started it. I'm curious to know, what was the process of quitting soda like for you? No, I I pretty much went cold turkey. It was a decision. And uh, I don't remember caffeine headaches, but, you know, I'm sure I had them. But, uh, yeah, it was, I've kind of always been that way. It's either you commit or you don't. So once I decide that's what I was going to do, that's just what, what I did. He has the willpower of nobody I've, I've ever known. When, Like he said, once he commits, he's full there, you know? Yes, when he was talking about not missing a single workout, I'm thinking, right. wow, that's impressive. Yeah, not me. You know, I went along with the ride. I enjoy getting fit and that kind of stuff too, but if I didn't feel well that day, I missed the workout. <laughs> And it's normal because everybody's body's different. I was committed to that long. I mean, at one point I I set a goal to get a six pack, which 
you know, I'm not genetically built for a six pack, but I always carry a little bit of weight right, right at my stomach, no matter what, what my weight is. But I had to drop from about 200 pounds to 164 pounds to achieve that goal. <laughs> and that, that was, uh, that was the one and only time I saw that weight, <laughs> you know, since I was in high school. So what other changes did you make while you were going through your program? Did you switch to more vegetables, leaner meats, less fast food? Like how did that whole process work? Was it in stages? The body for life, your vegetables, you take your cupped hands. So basically unlimited vegetables. Your carb was the size of your fist and your, your protein was the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. So just kind of followed those guidelines as far as that. We weren't really into grass fed or organic at that point. That came later. I will say we started cooking more, not buying like the frozen things, like say chicken tenders, you know, not buying frozen chicken tenders. We made our own chicken tenders. Still might've bought the chicken itself, but we, you, we did the coating with healthier options than buying them. I call them chicken. We switch from chicken nuggets to chicken tenders, but making our own, you know. So healthier choices when it came to eating and making more of our own food. We never ate out a lot, but I can say we bought more convenient foods. Do you know what I mean? You know, your yes. prepackaged stuff. Pre right, yeah. right. Microwave pizzas, you know. Yeah, and we kind of started getting away from that. Wonderful. And what kind of changes did you see? Did you sleep better, just felt better, more energy, alertness? Definitely uh, more uh, energy. Yeah, and all, all the above. Yeah, I mean. Feeling better. Yeah. I mean, you, you put crap in, you, you get crap out. So mm -hmm. the better you eat, the better you feel. I mean, it's a definite fact. I mean. Well, do you have any advice for someone wanting to embrace an organic diet, a more wholesome diet? You were talking about eating more vegetables and preparing more foods at home. Is there any other advice that you would have? Buy local, know your farmer, know the people that raise your meats and vegetables. I mean, there's many places that don't use pesticides, herbicides, antibiotics. You know, they may not have the certification, but they'll follow all the the guidelines the to, right? to make it right. Yeah, just be mindful. Shop the outskirts of the grocery store. <laughs> you know, skip those inner aisles. <laughs> right. That's the crazy foods are stuck in there. Stuck yeah. In there. The crazy so-called foods because most right. of those are synthetic options. We're fortunate enough that we have a little bit of property so we can raise our own animals now. So we raise them the way we want them. I can do gardening. I've always been a gardener. My mom and dad taught me at a very early age about gardening. I've carried that forward. I do a lot of canning, that type of thing for our own food. And of course, I don't use any pesticides or anything like that. I don't spray them with anything. When the season's in, that's another thing I would also say is your eating habits should curtail to what's in season. If peas are no longer in seasons, then, you know, switch to another vegetable that you should be eating because those are usually your freshest is the ones that the farmers are harvesting right now. And it, that again goes to the buying local. You can't always get corn all year round, you know? And I think we've all have become so accustomed to be able to get whatever we want or have an appetite for at that moment. We can get it at the grocery store. But then, you know, what are they doing to actually get that vegetable or that food? Correct. And we, we are so blessed here because we go through the seasons. So we know right. what's being harvested in April and then May, June, July, all the way through. Right. And it goes through the colors as well. Right. It goes from, you know, your greens into your blacks, blues, reds, and then yep. the orange as you go closer to fall. In your experience of working out and being involved in sports, do you think the average American sees food as medicine or as fuel for the body or it's just something to eat? Yeah, I think for the most part, it's just something to eat. I mean, I, I think that's changed into a point, but we've gone through a lot of phases and and looked at different things for health 
and what we find funny is, you know, someone doesn't want to pay a little extra for organic, healthy food, and you know, the same person's buying a hundred and fifty dollar pair of sneakers and not giving it a second thought. So. I think as Americans, our priorities are way off compared to other countries. We just are so conditioned to cheap food and, you know, always available, anything you want, anytime. Get the most for your dollar. Yeah. It's just something that now health is being paid a little more attention to. I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. And people either prioritize their health or they don't. And the ones that are prioritizing the health are setting the example kind of to help spread new information throughout the family. It's like a wave that comes through and say, yeah, I've been watching her eat this ridiculous expensive food. When they find out that you're spending thousands of dollars to try to feel better when the person who is caring for their health gets to keep that money for a great vacation. I think also a lot of people look at the food after something happens to them physically, health-wise. Say, for instance, blood pressure medicines or whatever, you know, that all of a sudden comes into their life because they go to the doctor and they find out they have high blood pressure. Then they're looking for ways to monitor that or get better or whatever. Eating healthier foods would help that situation in most instances. So it's always an afterthought instead of, being proactive about it. And I think that's one of our downfalls. We need to be more proactive in doing those kind of things. I agree with you. The famous statement, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. When you embrace your fresh fruits, vegetables, your high quality products, they reward you with better health, better sleep, better everything. So Scott, in your racing competitions, can you talk about how your nutrition and your focus on health helps you with vitality and your strength? Yeah, I'm 54 now and I'm playing basketball with guys that are from 18, I think the oldest, maybe late 30s. I'm very competitive, so I can't let anybody beat me. (laughs) It's just important to me to to be competitive at any age. I don't think it has to be a number. Obviously, I am going to get older and at some point going to slow down, but it hasn't happened yet. I I can honestly say I'm good now as I was at 24 or 25. I mean, you know, I think that's probably when I peaked in health. I don't think I've lost a beat. You know, trials is as much an endurance sport as anything, too. I mean, it's four hours on a motorcycle, so, you know, you got to be able to focus at the last hours as well as the first hour. So it's just something that is, has helped me in, in, in any competition. That is just incredible information for any person of any age to hear. And to me, age is just a number. Yeah. You know, some people don't start lifting weights until they're 70 years old. It's just a number, but health helps you stay motivated to continue to move, move your body. Men, women were never intended just to sit. We were designed to move and grow and learn. My son will be upset I tell this story, but we had a, what do they call it? Manic, rugged. Rugged maniac run, which is a 5K run with obstacles. The previous two years, I was still probably recovering, and my son is, what, 20, 28, so he would have been 26. Well, he beat me that year at this run, and he he wanted to sign me up again. I said, you can do that, but it's not going to be the same result. At the last 50 feet of the race, after the last obstacle, which was you had to run up a wall, I I was able to get him at the end, and uh, 54 does beat 28 once in a while. (laughs) Well, I think that that's a story that your son would be proud of. That is, <laughs> I don't know about that. Dad has that type of competitive spirit and drive. That's just an awesome story. <laughs> Someday the outcome might be different. <laughs> but you are setting an incredible example for everyone to follow. And, well, I'm proud of you just hearing the story. It's inspirational. So I'm sure he probably sees you 
as someone to aspire to. He wouldn't admit that, but I think he does. <laughs> yes, I well, think he would. He has his own story because teen, late teens, early 20s, he was overweight and out of shape. Yeah. And he actually got determined and lost 100 pounds and has kept it off ever since. He's doing very well, too. And I, we hope it's because of our lifestyle that he has seen it can be done and it can be followed and it is better to be in shape because now he sees that he can do a whole lot more than he used to be able to do. Sounds like, I mean, I'm inspired just listening to you. So when we complete this podcast recording, I, I think I'm going to go work out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way for the day. Let's just go work out. <laughs> I'm going to see my six pack. <laughs> yes, being active is very rewarding and not everyone is in tune to work out to that level, but just taking the time to walk a mile, just taking the time to do five minutes of whatever you like, a minute of jumping jacks. But if you are consistent in doing that, it pays off over time. So it's been great talking with you guys. I feel like this podcast could go on for the next three hours. <laughs> <laughs> we will have to do this again and welcome you back. And a call to action for our audience is to ask you if you are doing something that you know in your heart and mind is negatively affecting your health, find the willpower to change it. Whether it's eliminating soda and start drinking water, whether it's just moving about or embracing some exercise, deep breathing, whatever it takes, just vow to yourself that as of today, you are going to make a change because your health is the greatest asset you will ever own. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Cindy. We wish you the very best as well as our audience. Mm -hmm.